Hi folks, my name is Adam Johnston, Chief Metallurgist at Transmere Metallurgical Consultants in Lima, Peru, and uh, we're the developers of the Cancha Geometallurgy software that I'm going to be de um, demoing today at the SME 2021 virtual conference. Uh, it's going to be a full demo, unedited, and the file that I'm going to be uh, developing doesn't have anything in it. So it's basically a, a fresh, uh, a fresh from zero demo that you're going to be getting today. Yeah. So. Without further delay, uh, here's this is Cancha. Uh, basically, we want to start off by setting up a new file. So just call it a, a SME demo. And um, we're going to save this as a GMT file. Now, a GMT, think of it like Geomet, and uh, everything's going to be in that one file. Next thing we're going to do is import data. And here I've got uh, some data set up with some drilling data, some block model, met data, and some DXFs for pit shells. So just gonna import these. Um, it automatically detected that these were drilling interval data and that this is block model data, but I had to tell it that this was metallurgy results. I had to tell it that this is metallurgical characteristics. This is metallurgical origin, and this is metallurgical characteristics. So you have to just set those up it detected correctly that this is a surface and that these are drilling intervals so now I'll just go one by one through those and just have to line up you know what it needs to know whether which which column has the drill hole data the from and to so I'm just going to tell it that but it already it already guessed it correctly so I don't have to tell it anything and it also guessed correctly for the assays that saw that they're numerical and that this is the drill hole from and to so I'll be able to get through this quite quickly because it's recognizing everything uh, straight away. The block model, uh, you had to bring in with the northern, easting, and RLL. And it also works for rotated block models and um, subcell and stuff like that too. So here we've got uh, some metallurgy. Now we have to say what the sample ID and the phase is. So that's fine. Um, now metallurgical origin, we have to say what the drill hole was from and to sample ID and phase and uh, it's detected those correctly and we've also got some extra stuff that we've added in manually uh, on on things like uh, leach composites some whole rock assays on the met samples that's fine and here's some of the results we've got some cyanide consumptions and some gold recoveries uh, results to import uh, now on the collars uh, you can see that it's got all this uh, eastern northern and rl for the drill collars uh, but also we don't want to use the azimuth and dip because we can use a survey uh, lithology is bringing brought in categorical information that's fine and here we've got the surveys uh, azimuth dip depth all good so what it's doing now is it's importing all that data and it's pre-processing it uh, and now it's there so all that keeps like it's now part of that file and it, we've got a great record here of what file we imported what date what version all that stuff for future records and transparency moving on to the table view we can interrogate the data by looking at the table view uh not super useful for analysis but it is for debugging like if you're having some weird results and you're wondering what the original data looked like you can find it here in the table view and search it uh, here on the left with the feature list, so it's always, you've got all the drilling data first, then the block model, then the metallurgy with, uh, but the metallurgy, uh, we've only got the data that came from the MET lab right now. What we want to do is go to the features here and we want to project that pit. So let's just have a little look. I'll just show you what it looks like. So we've got a, a pit shell here. It's, uh, and then we've got a block model and we've got some drilling and we've got some samples inside the, inside the, uh, inside the pit. Yeah. So what we want to do is project what's in and out of the pit onto everything. We want to put all the information that's in the block model and the drilling onto the MET samples. So we just come here and we say, right, project the pit onto the block model. And now we're going to project the block model onto the drilling. And now we're going to project all that information onto the MET samples. And you can see this isn't a very powerful computer I'm using, yet it runs almost instantaneously, even just in you know, an i5 or i3 processor of 4 gigs RAM, you can do this. It's not it's not very really taxing uh, software for a regular computer. Uh, so we've got all this information now loaded up onto the MET samples, and you can see here now I've got all the, the drilling and block model information available as characteristics of the metallurgical samples. So if I wanted to know what the assay was for beryllium, I might not have it from the MET lab, but I've got it from the from the geological drilling. Uh, 
filters. So I can set up, for example, that, you know, what the or is. So I might want to say, you know, or, and I could say that, uh, you know, only consider uh, blocks that have, uh, you know, for example, uh, right, again, the block model, we want to say, only consider things that have got higher than, you know, 0 0.05 uh, or something like that. Um, and the minimum value is 0.12 or something like that. So that's just sort of uh, a way that you can uh, set up filters and you can turn those on and off. And you can have many different filters, oxides, sulfides, and things like that. So in the 3D view, I can uh, ghost things like, you know, the, I can turn off the shells and make it a ghost. I can put uh, labels on the MET samples. I can put label, you know, it's kind of crowded, but we can have, uh, you know, a section view. So uh, let's have a little bit of a look at a section there with a 20 meter section and go, uh, well, what about if we load up something a bit different, put the arsenic on, the, on there and... Um, And then we can step through and we can see the, the different sections, cut and paste those into PowerPoint, into Word reports, things like that. Uh, there's also other things we can do, like look at these uh, other kind of cut planes that you can uh, move around and stuff like that. And you can uh, change colors of your, uh, let's put on, for example, the gold recovery and make it see, so I can see where the good the good and bad recovery were on the different samples and if I want to know what that sample is I can just click on it if I can get it to click not working for me so let's uh, maybe turn off that I can click on that and see what the uh, what the sample is here's all the drill holes here and if I was to click around here I can see where the drilling is and if I click around here I can see where the individual met samples are all very interactive and wonderful. Uh, now moving on to logs view, I can uh, look here and see uh, what the different uh, samples had as far as rock type goes, different assays, uh, things like that. So, uh, you know, let's just put up a couple of useful ones, maybe for example, silver and arsenic and gold and stuff like that. So now I can see that this sample BAS002 has got an average grade of 0.52 gold. 9.62 arsenic and I've got this summary table for all the samples in the drill hole here as well and again just jumping around if I uh, bring up uh, this in 3d on a second screen or even just two things on the same screen and if I select a run here on the logs then it'll show me where it is in 3d as well that's kind of neat uh, it's all, uh, I guess, uh, interactive if I uh, click here on a, on a sample in 3d it'll come up in logs so moving ahead quickly, the next one along is analysis. And here I can look at things like XY graphs. I could plot, for example, you know, a couple of assays from the drilling against each other. Uh, I could group those together by alteration, for example. And I can even put together, you know, sort of ellipses or, uh, you know, different kinds of regressions and stuff like that. Uh, turn off different things. Uh, and as you can see, there's no programming required. There's no... Uh, you know, you don't have to do anything uh, weird as far as interface goes, just all point and click. Um, so now the next thing I want to show you is uh, targets. So the real objective of geometallurgy is to make predictions useful and, and, and have high confidence in the predictions that you're making. So what I'm going to do now is predict the gold recovery. And I'm going to use not just the black information here, the, the fields here that are in, uh, the, the features that are in, in black are the the features that are imported from the MATLAB, you know, from the head assay table and, and whatnot. The green ones are the lookups that have come from the drilling and from the block model. So that's super useful because now I've got all those extra features that could be, you know, alteration, for example, can now be used as a possible prediction uh, feature as well as categorical. So I'm just going to hit run and uh, you can ignore that you can take things out of here and you can prune it if you want but i just usually leave everything in there even if there's 500 or a thousand things from quem scan and everything else what it did was it ran everything against everything and looked for the best domaining system so here on the left is my domains and here on the right are all the uh, possible regressions inside each domain so first of all there's global and globally it's saying that uh, the gold recovery is proportional to uh, you know constant minus the gold grade minus the cyanide uh, soluble copper grade and that's got a good R squared so it's already looking like a good model but we can see here from the Williams plot there's a couple of outliers so going back again remembering that we've got these uh, 3d views that we can pull in um, 
So if I click on the dots here on the Williams plot and I see that these points have high leverage, I can see where they are in 3D here as well. Uh, so that's super useful. Uh, the same goes for the logs, of course. And um, these are all uh, connected. So I can click on a point here for the MET samples and I can see the same point uh, in all these different uh, statistical tests. And I can do that for every different model. And I can also do it inside domaining systems. So we can look through the possible domaining systems. There definitely seems to be something going on there. Uh, even look, you know, even said that inside and out of the pit, it found that the pit uh, shell is actually a good domaining system, which is kind of promising. Uh, it's really promising because the stuff that's uh, in pit has high recovery. Um, rock type, for example, it says, okay, uh, limestone is a different. So this is pretty interesting. Uh, uh, and it's also said that, hang on, gabbro and basalt, maybe they should be grouped together. So it gave me that. It said, okay, limestone versus gabbro and basalt. And then here, so now we've got one big domain with uh, more samples in one domain. And we can start to interrogate that. We can look at it in the table view and export that into the report. We can look at a uh, little uh, sort of parallel uh, 3D doobalakis here that are really useful to be able to uh, see, you know, how the recovery results were versus predicted residuals, uh, all these kind of statistics and things like that for looking around the deposit. Uh, and so that way we can choose a domaining system and uh, a model that we like. Now, um, I've still got a couple of minutes left, so uh, normally, that, what I just showed you there would normally take a month and I just did it in 10 minutes and now choosing metallurgical samples usually takes a week and I'm going to do it in two minutes. So uh, what we're going to do, first of all, we're going to come here to the wizard and we say we want to select 20 samples, five meters each. Let's make them a little bit longer, maybe eight meters each. You can choose a focus case. We want to choose the ore, for example. Uh, and we'll, let's just uh, say that we want to use all the different drill holes that are all available. But you might want to say that just drilling from this year or something like that is where you want to take the samples from. We want to consider the alteration. We want to consider, for example, uh, the silver grade and we want to consider the gold grade and the copper grade. And maybe we want to consider the lithology as well. So let's just put that. So these are the things we want to consider and make sure that uh, they're uh, thoroughly uh, vetted when we're choosing the metallurgical samples. Hit apply. And through the magic of machine learning, it's already chosen uh, 20 samples of about eight meters each. And you might be wondering, but uh, you know, are there any good? Are they representative? Well, let's have a look because it also automatically put together the documentation for the samples. We can see that, yeah, they're distributed along the Easting, Northing and RL. The line distribution is for the deposit, for the drilling, and the dots are the ones for the MET samples that have been chosen. And I can click on those, I, on any one, and it'll show me where they are in the different views and give me the data for that uh, candidate sample. Okay, uh, so we can see that the distribution of rock type, alteration, RL, Northing, Easting, silver, gold, everything we asked it to is looking pretty good. And now we can look at those samples where they are in 3D and how they compare. And we can also look at this sort of thing, you know, where, uh, you know, we've got the drilling uh, bivariate analysis and we have the sample bivariate analysis. And so if they're representative, they should be looking similar to each other, which they do. So that's it. We've just chosen metallurgical samples and we can, uh, if we want to look at them, we can look at them here in the, the logs. We can see them here. And if we want to look at them in uh, 3D, we can do that as well. Um, just click on them there and it'll show me where it is in 3D. So that's it. I, I've just done uh, a metallurgical sample in two or three minutes. So uh, I hope you'll agree that uh, I was able to do a full GMAT program in 14 minutes. And uh, that's the kind of work that would usually take a couple of months uh, using older tools. So uh, now it's time for questions and answers. Thanks.